responding to their first call of their tour. Oh, well, I became a firefighter, I got a lot of reasons, but one, you know, I live in the city, I got a cousin, got a few friends, they own the fire department, so I thought it was a good opportunity when I seen it, so jumped on it. Did all my probation here at the House of Pain, all five years. I, you know, this has been my house, so. The crew arrives on scene and enters the apartment in the apartment building. They are told that the patient has a history of diabetes. Medic 24 arrives on scene. How you doing? The paramedics approach the residence equipped with the chair to help remove the patient from the residence. Good morning. Good morning. The patient requests to go out to the ambulance on her own power, and the first responders oblige her request. The truck company returns to the apparatus and go back into service. Back at the station, the crews enjoy breakfast. Hi, I'm Firefighter Robinson, uh, a member here of uh, Engine 10, Truck 13. I've been here, well, I was appointed here in 92, August of 92. This will be my 16th year. I rode uh, 11, engine, 11 years on the engine and the remainder on the truck, which I am now. Well, actually, I came with Firefighter because I needed a job at the time. You know, when I was growing up, I really didn't see any fire trucks. As a kid, I probably saw one fire truck in my 18 years of living in Norfolk, Virginia. But when I came up here to get married, I needed a job and I applied here. And uh, the schedule, the pay wasn't really an issue because it really didn't pay much at that time. But I liked the excitement that I saw when, you know, from seeing a lot of fire trucks and stuff going on here. So I applied and I became a member as of August 92. And I started here at Engine 10. I was appointed here, rather. And since that time, I've been here. So I've been on the job 16 years now. Mm -hmm. 
Truck 13 responds to another medical local. Crew of Engine 10 arrive on scene to this medical local in a replacement apparatus, Engine 77. I remember when we had a five, it was all EVOTS. It was, it was like one of my first big fives. We was in a room and the room was about to flash over, so he had grabbed me out and we rolled onto the roof and we got out my first time, so kind of like got me because, I, you know, I threw up. When that was like my real first big one, so I threw up. And I don't care if anybody seen me throw up right there. I was a rookie, so you, know, you won't catch me now, though. It appears that this is not a medical call, but a potential gas leak. Firefighter Reggie Burke checks out the top floor of the residence for any signs of gas. The test results turn out to be negative. The engine company exits the residence. The truck company moves out to the rig. Reggie stows the test equipment on the rig and they are back in service. Uh. I called for a CO, she thought there was something wrong with the stove, but we get no reading, so everything is fine. Everything is fine, so that is that. <laughs> On this windy afternoon, the crew of Truck 13 are detailed to clear a street blocked by a fallen tree. My name is John Celestock. Uh, I'm the truck driver of 13 truck here on number two platoon. I've been a uh, technician on this truck for 14 years, two years as a tillerman, and then uh, moved up to the truck driver spot here. I became a firefighter because I like the, the excitement, help people, uh, try to make a difference. And, uh, I just enjoy what I'm doing. I did my probation at 18 engine, which is down at uh, Aurora Capitol Hill. When I came on, I was called a 10-day wonder. I spent two weeks down at the training academy, then they sent me out to the company. I was out in the company for almost two years before I actually went back down to the training academy to do my full course. So after that, after I finished there, I came back to 18 inch for about, uh, right around six more months, I guess, and then I came over here. <laughs> The crew
crew respond to another call affected by today's high winds? We had a fire and we got so deep in we couldn't find it and I got turned around because you know, it was like my fourth or fifth fire, I got turned around and I let the hose go with you. That, everybody know that is a no-no. And they teach you that, but until you feel a, a lot of fire and heat, you really don't know. Plus my helmet had got knocked off going in by the air, air conditioned ducts. So the officer kept telling me to cool it down, cool it down. So I kept opening it up and then I told him I had the lead. He said, no, you can make it, come on. I kept cooling up, but he didn't know my helmet had came on. So that's when he said, just go ahead back. And that's when I put the hose down, not thinking. And it, by the time I got all the way back to the door, I had actually turned around and went back to him. So I was burning pretty bad because I, I stayed in the hospital at night with blisters. But one of my friends, Chet Barrett, he uh, actually, he grabbed me at the door because I had made it all the way back, but I didn't know I was at the door. And he reached in and grabbed me out. And he, like he used to say, uh, uh, me and him pretty cool. He's a white guy. And he, like, he said, oh, thank you, said, uh, you the first black crab I ever seen, you know, like a crab is steaming coming out of crab pot because I was smoking. I had steam coming here and it was cold at night, but the only thing you could see was the steam coming off my body. I was pretty much, my hands had got locked up, my head was blistering, but since that time I only had minor burns, but I don't make them same mistakes anymore. I learned a lot from being here, truly have. On scene, the crew finds that there are branches of a tree that could potentially cause more damage than it has. We got caught on a call. It was like a March morning, rainy. Our lady threw her three month to four month old child out the six story window. She, the little child landed in a mud puddle. I didn't know what to do. Like I said, I'm just out of the training academy. Or I'm just, like I said, I'm only on a job for like maybe three months. And it was the first time I ever seen anything like that. And uh, came in and scooped the little child up out of the mud puddle and, the medics took her off to the hospital and stuff. I think she, I think she ended up dying later on, but it was just, it was pretty traumatic. And the ladies up, you know, her, the kid's mother's up in the window, swing, you know, singing gospel songs and stuff like that. You know, it was freaky. There was another problem that stands in their way. This car is endangered of being damaged by the branches of the tree. The crew is forced to break windows, to get in, and to attempt to move the car. The car is unable to be moved. Who uses the ladder to remove the branch? The crews of Engine 10 and Truck 13 discuss the operation and prepare to go back into service. As they head back to the station, they get another medical local.
The crew arrive on scene to find the call is a false alarm. Being, while being here at the house paying, there was one incident. Uh, I was working overtime on number three, and uh, just go, they just got me up for watch. I was just getting ready to sit down, watch platoon, had my red man. Then the, the tone started going off uh, for a house fire down the street. Uh, we were pulling up, when we were pulling out of the firehouse, this old lady comes up in the station wagon, kind of yells at us, you're going to need more than two trucks, you got to put this one out. As soon as we turned the corner and looked down the street, had three row houses off, 24, and one of the gentlemen was helping me with it. He wanted to take the sidewalk. I said, nah, I'm already in the yard. So, and one lady was trapped. So we put the ladder up, went up, and uh, I yanked her out. And after we got her down, they were yelling for another lady being trapped in the next house over, which was the main house that was on fire. And uh, I didn't have a bottle on at the time. So I told him, look, you gotta go up the ladder. I don't have a bottle on the opposite. I'll be right behind you. So he climbs up the ladder and I went right after him. And he went in and he pretty much actually just tripped on her, tripped over. He goes, slop, I found her. I said, all right, come on, let's get her out the window. I'm still on the ladder. And he's like making his third attempt and the aide, it's down in the yard just screaming at him. And I'm trying to calm him down, he's getting all excited, and this aide's down here yelling and screaming and shit like that. So finally it just got to the point where I had to put one foot on my ladder and one on this, on this ledge. We're a couple stories up. And then I reached in and yanked her up one out of there. This other firefighter finally gets his ass out the window. And as soon as he gets out the window, just the whole place lights off. From waist up, you can't see him anymore. He's he saw him go off the fire. How he never got burnt, I don't know. <laughs> Ended up getting a couple medals out of it, but uh, that's probably one of the more memorable fires that I've been on. That's kind of, like I said, tragic comedy, you know, like a Shakespeare play or something like that. The crew grabs their gear and they return to service. <laughs>